Seeing you approach, the bruised man raises his bear in welcome. Crazy motherfucker. <whistles> Didn't think you had that fury in you, but I guess I've misjudged a lot of people lately. That was one hell of a shot. Hell of a shot. The fucks did not expect that. I guess what I'm trying to say here is, thank you for intervening, fellas. That was mighty brave of you. His hand is covered in bruises and half plastered. Still, this hulking lump of man is glad to be alive. This is big. It's as big of a thank you as Titus Hardy can muster under any circumstances. Now, how can I help you? Theo was old. I think he'd be pretty happy with the way he went. Never could imagine him withering away on a sickbed. But Angus, he was just a stupid kid. Didn't realize the mess he'd gotten into. Trusted me. Still, the balls on that kid went down fighting for someone else's shit like a fat, angry bear. Here it comes. The last one is the worst one. He only deals with it by drinking copious amounts of 8% beer. An honest tactic and effective. And Glenn, Glenn was my friend, best I've ever had. I love that crazy homo like my own brother. We're all fucked without him, but what do you do? This job is shit. Well, yeah. Memento Mori. Right. Memento Mori, or Remember That You Must Die, is a slogan various religious orders have thrown around since the dawn of mankind to emphasize the vanity of earthly life and the transient nature of all earthly pursuits. In essence, it means one should live virtuously in this life to live better in the afterlife. Sure it does. Live every day like it's your last. Cause you might be dead tomorrow. Theo was old, but ang- Here it comes, an honest- And Glenn, Glenn was my f- Dennis, that poor little rat is dead too. I always thought he'd run, but no, he stayed. Stupid, brave fella. He didn't like him. That only makes it worse. Man, getting shot has really squeezed all the funk out of you. Mark my words. One day we'll look back at this day and remember their courage, not their deaths. Right. But today ain't that day yet, is it? I guess I'll take a closer look at our Union members. There's bound to be some ambitious fellows there who'd love nothing more than advancing social democracy by busting some heads. Might even ask Tibbs if he's tired of replacing Windows, and maybe wants to have some fun with his brother. Anyway, don't you worry. As long as Titus Hardy's standing, there will be Hardy Boys. He's right. The numbers are replaceable. In an organization of thousands of men, there are plenty who join. Don't know. Don't care. I'll be glad if I never see that fucking woman again. Even after all that hell, He's still bitter about her? Nope. He did. He shrugs 
and tries to look uninterested. His clenched jaw says otherwise. If anything, it's another score for him to settle one day. It'll have to wait for now. Judging by the sight of you, I'd suggest crawling into bed with a bottle of whiskey in one hand and a big tit in the other. Yeah, but pay Monica visiting Jandro. She's got a knack for making men forget about their worries. Biggest pair of milkers in all Rebacho. Hell, you both look like you could use some feminine company right now. Thank you for your advice, Eugene, and you too, Alain. I do always appreciate a good use of the expression, milkers. It sincerely amuses him how hard these guys typecast themselves. You're welcome, Bina Clard. You're all right in my book. Take care, coppers. You too look after yourselves now. Death passed on you today, but men don't get that lucky twice. Copo loco. And the... Uh, huh. Normal cop, I guess. Good luck in Shamrock. Scars made the best tattoos, they say. Thanks for getting involved, guys. Not a lot of cops would step into that line of fire. But you did. And if you ever feel like the uniform is holding you back, I've got a few vacancies. You'd make one hard, hardy boy, Copper. And Titus Hardy himself would make a good officer. That man was born to lead. I will, Capo. That's a promise. Now scoot, cause the Hardy Boys got some morning and drinking to do. Take it easy on the drink. The danger has not passed. This town needs you on your feet. Good point, Bino Clard. We'll keep the vol under 12% tonight. Graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. This was Cindy the Skull. The lieutenant crouches, touching the fuel oil with his finger. Looks like it, yes. This is still fresh. It wasn't here yesterday. And blood. Some of it is even yours. Heavy fuel oil. Isn't that flammable? You could buy some smokes, light up a ciggy and throw it in there. You know, just to see what happens. See if it's flammable. It's better that way. Safer. Um, just ask me if you need anything. A 
colorful display of cigarettes and out the bottles wink at you in the light. The smokes too glitter in their wrapping. It's like looking into a kind of heaven. Your knees are weak. There, in that dark green glass, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth, wine, alcohol, beer, alcohol, love, alcohol. The beauty, the truth, the poetry of it all. I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health, but I guess you already know that. Don't ask, don't look, don't do anything here. Just go away, get back to work. Here you go, mister. Graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. This was Cindy the Skull. The fuel oil catches fire immediately with a low hiss, a bright orange flash across the surface of the lettering. The falling snow turns to vapor above the burning message, mingling with the black smoke. What if the words are not directed at the people of Martinez, or even the coalition aerostatics above the city? They're meant for something above even those. The lieutenant has taken a small step back. He looks at your face illuminated by the flames and nods silently. Then the fire falters. The flames warmed him too. Not at all in a bad way. Let's go to that island. Slowly, the flames subside, the fuel burning out. The air still smells of mazout and springtime. 